Hey guys, welcome back to another awesome show of Real Estate Uncensored. We are here, we are live, we are having a lot of fun. We have Tim Stafford here. He is a returning victim uh, to the podcast. Just an awesome, awesome guy. And we're going to be talking today about kind of some of the, the numbers he's been crunching and kind of what he's seen out and about when it comes to, you know, the 10 trends for social data showing that, you know, you can, that's going to affect the real estate agents and agencies. Uh, but first, before we get to our guest, I've got to get to our, my illustrious co-host today, Mr. Oh. The Evil Bald Ninja, Volpe! What's, up, What's up, Zillow Killer? I love that shirt, man. Oh, dude, isn't it nice? It is nice, I almost, yeah. went, I almost went full <laughs> Zillow Killer and just went with the hat and the shirt, but I'm like, okay, that's a little too much. Man, listen, if that's not a commercial for your boy, I don't know what is. I know, right? Shout out to James, 30 on 30. You see that beast doing 30 push-ups every day? Yeah, dude. I, I watch him do that. I'm like, fuck that shit. That's just, no, I'm cool. Not doing it, but... Uh, I did... Have you Wait, so real quick, during this this uh, social distancing, have you seen the C10, do 10? Or no. Do 10, give 10. 10 push-ups, you tag 10 people, and then they have to do 10 push-ups, and they're videoing it on Instagram stories. So no. I, I did that, but I found a better one. See a beer, drink a beer. <laughs> I like that one way better. I think that one's way better. But uh, right? let's do this. <laughs> let's let's get to our, our 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 guest, Mr. Tim Stafford. How are you, buddy? I'm doing great, you guys. It's busy. the uh, The season has gotten kind of crazy for all of us, and uh, the social data is in great buzzing right now so uh, i think it's i think it's got a lot that real estate agents can start to talk about let's let's break that down a little bit what are you seeing in your data sets right now um and how is this affecting real estate agents now what do you see how it's going to affect them in the future and gene I, I want you to weigh in on this too because i mean i think both of you guys have got some awesome insight on this um and i, I think everybody needs to kind of talk about it a little bit because we're all kind of losing our marbles you know this is we're all locked in our houses gene's drinking beer you know james is doing push-ups tim's crunching data and i'm watching netflix so i mean <laughs> <laughs> that's what i tell everybody uh but tim tell us man, break it down <laughs> well you know i think one of the things and first of all is that i i don't just crunch numbers for real estate agents i crunch numbers just in general and then what we do is we try to apply the numbers to what we think might be trending for particular groups of people. So um, so we've done a little bit of work here on trying to understand some things that, that might uh, best apply to the real estate agents that are listening to your show. And I think between uh, you and Gene, you guys can kind of break it out maybe a little bit more into the practical uh, application of it, because uh, really all I am is just a geek. And so, um, but... Uh, but I'm a good geek. I mean, I, I know what I'm looking at, and I can kind of tell you some things. So, um, so you know, there's, it's like witches, you know, bad witches, good witches, if there is such a thing. Well, you know, geeks are the same. There, there are geeks, and then there are geeks that, you know, can do some good in the world. And so a um, couple of things that – so I, I kind of came up with ten things. I mean, we may not cover all of them, but I think the, I think the most important thing that I can tell you is that um, – there's a lot of social media platforms that are being launched right now. They're, they're just, they're coming, they're all over the place. Yeah, and, and a lot of them, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about this in just a minute. A lot of them are niche, a lot of them are private. Um, there's a lot of things that are going on, but there's just a lot of things that are being tested out in the marketplace. And I think the, one of the reasons is because everybody knows that they're at your home, uh, but our data doesn't just talk about the last two weeks or three weeks. We we, we trend data for six months at a time, so this has been going on for a while. And uh, I think one thing that we can really kind of take away from it is that not every social media platform that's launched is going to be useful to everybody who looks at it. And I think that's really important that we say that because a lot of times there's a general, there's a general misunderstanding, I think, that just because um, uh, 10,000 people are on a particular platform doesn't necessarily mean that that platform is going to be useful. Uh, for you, and especially when you're talking about um, what Matt talks about a lot, which is about being micro-famous, about trying to understand how to find your niche in a particular area like you would with real estate agents. You know, the thing is, is that we're still seeing the biggest numbers are still in the biggest batters. So the tendency is to think that 
oh well there are all these there are all these platforms out there they're going to hurt facebook or they're going to hurt instagram or they're going to hurt um you know some, another platform that you might be using and the truth of the matter is is that they're not really hurting them much at all in that you still have a number of you know thousands, billions and billions of people who are on these platforms and so like twitter has not slowed down really in the last six months that we've seen uh facebook is only growing um and so i think one of the things that people need to know is that i don't think they need to get too much into a um a huff or a, a um, frenzy about everything uh with the exception of possibly one and that is getting a lot of market share and that's TikTok. TikTok is really uh, they're really grabbing a lot of market share, and we're watching that very carefully, how that's happening. It might be something that real estate agents want to talk about in the future. Um, it might not be. But I think I think the thing that I would continue to say, and I've said this on your show before, is go to a platform that you, you know, start with a platform that you can use and know extremely well. And I think for most people, that's going to be Facebook. And uh, there's so much to know about Facebook. You know, Tim, one of the things that is really interesting is that I, I think what you're saying is 100% true. And guys, if you guys don't know this, Tim has a PhD in social media and probably a bunch of other things. So and it's not like he's just, you know, smoking, you know, you know, taking bong loads and then kind of throwing things at the dartboard. He's really knows what he's, what he's talking about. Um, and I, you know, Tim, what I'm really doing, and I was talking to Gene about this in the pre-show is that I'm going hard in the paint on YouTube. I'm going, I'm doubling down on video, tripling down on video, and I'm just going for it because I believe that that is the way of the future and I know that's how I can get people to come to me um, you know on YouTube like I'm, I'm working with a guy named Jackson uh, his YouTube channel is called real estate agent uh, you sorry 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 YouTube agent it's called YouTube agent go check it out it teaches you how to be visible on YouTube and how to get the leads calling into you Gene what do you what what, what platform are you gonna double in on yeah um, Instagram uh, Facebook and and I can't I just can't do the TikTok thing, man. It's just tough. Um, and and probably and YouTube. I think I want to get more. Uh, I'll tell you what. I've been doing videos. You've seen them, the challenge, mm -hmm. the lead videos over the last ten days or whatever. And yeah. I I got to be honest, man. The the engagement and the responses and the private conversations that I'm having with people because of those videos is unbelievable. I mean, that's it's going to be video, and then I'm going to put the video everywhere that works. Tim, what are you seeing? Are you seeing video being the way of the future as always, or is it uh, is it the micro content like on TikTok? Uh, you know what? <clears throat> well, we we can't talk about TikTok yet, Greg. Honestly, because it's getting a lot of market share, but we don't know what it's going to do. Is it is it going to is it going to level off? Is it going to spike and then be gone? You know, is it going to plateau and then we're going to be able to actually figure it out? Um, but I will tell you this: uh, uh, we're still in the numbers. It's like. 80% conversion rate if you do video. People will click on it, they'll like it, they'll share Jeez. it, they'll, you know, it's it's got like an 80% conversion rate. So over and over again, we get that number, you know, it's it's between 75 and 82 over and over and over and over again. So, and so when you're talking about content, you want to talk about, you know, but if you really want the numbers to really go berserk, and, and this is really important, this is, this is kind of lower on my list, but I'm going to go there anyway, because What's a list, but just a suggestions, right? Um, if you really want the numbers to be staggering, then when companies um, of all kinds, especially uh, service companies, have their customers create content, so whether they're doing testimonials or whether they're they're showing, like for you, it might be a new customer, you know, like a, a real somebody just bought a piece of real estate and they're making a video with their family in the front room or whatever. That stuff converts way over eighty percent. Like, really, we're we're seeing between eighty four and eighty six percent conversion. And what I mean by conversion is, I mean they click on it, they share, they engage. You know, they do something. And so we about eighty six, eighty five, eighty six percent of the time, we see um, that if so, if if the customers are making videos about a product or a service. Uh, we're seeing those numbers just skyrocket. They're just people just love that stuff because there's authenticity there, and so, so it's not just you telling about how great the product is or or, or the service. 
So let me, so we, we call that, uh, you know, the angel effect. I mean, that's what I've heard it be called before is when mm -hmm. you, know, you have a customer right. or the past clients right. or someone else does that for you. And it doesn't have to be quirky, like them bouncing around in like dinosaur suits or Gene dressing up as a Gumby, you know, and sitting around the house <laughs> talking about how great the McDaniel Callahan team is of representing their, their, the buying or selling. Or is it just them sitting there with their camera going, dude, I worked with Greg McDaniel, guy and his team fucking rule, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, I give them high, I, a high five. A top ten, something like that. I mean, what kind of con what kind of conversation does that look like? Yeah, I, I think that if you're quirky anyway, then quirky works. If you're not quirky anyway, then authenticity is what you want to go for. I, I, I think because see, the thing is, is that there's authenticity in quirky if you're quirky already. If people know, like a good example is your beer, your beers and calls um mm -hmm. show which i watch fairly often um you know just i'm not a real estate agent i'm a i'm a i'm just a number cruncher but i like that show that there's an authenticity to that show because it's just you your calls sometimes it's sometimes it's 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 just painfully unbelievable to me that somebody could actually sit around <laughs> and call people dead cold call like that i just i mean i it's 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 but it's it's entertaining and the reason is is because you're not really trying to sell anything you're not trying to you know p do puffery you're just right. being you on a call and you're just calling and some of these people are just you know they're trying to they, they really try to get after you or whatever and you just kind of do that and i think what i'm saying is there's a quirkiness about that but we're not trying to produce quirky. We're trying to produce authenticity. And okay. what we're seeing is that when when customers are authentically happy with the, with the product, they're obviously not being paid to give you this. They're just saying, "Look, I I bought this house and I just love it, and I just think that he did a great job." That those those kinds of videos are converting very high. People are sharing them. People are are liking them. You know, so. That's what we see. We see it in all kinds of industries, product placement, all kinds of things. So there's a, one of our good friends, uh, Nick Sackis. Um, Gene and I both know him very, very well. And he's another marketer and real estate agent out of Florida, your neck of the woods. Um, don't ask me where in Florida because I'll get it wrong. Um, but, I mean, he has a, a, a product called Video Chirp. And if you guys want to go check that out, it's called Video Chirp. It's like super cheap. And what it is, it, and my phone's charging over here, but you have an app on your phone, you just click on it, and then you just give it your phone to a client, and they'll record like a 50-second testimonial on video for you. It uploads, and then it, it you know, it, it, it's, you know, trimmed, and it has music put to it, and everything's done automatically in like 10 minutes or less, and then you have a fully done, you know, video testimonial for you. And... I think those are really, I mean, Gene, weigh in on this thing. I mean, for video, for, for testimonials, is it more important to get a written one or a video one or an audio or all? So, you know, we've talked about this before, right? So it's always, 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 always video because video can be stripped into all those other things you just mentioned, right? Audio, mm -hmm. you can't get video, but you right. can get text. Text, you can't get video, you can't get audio. I mean, you could make, a, you could make an MP4 out of text, but... Third part, I always say this, the strongest marketing that there is out there is third-party edification, right? We talked about this before. Mm -hmm. If you, Greg, I'll ask you, if, if, do you go to the local restaurant down the street more often because you see the commercial on TV or because your brother Brad is like, dude, you would love this restaurant? The answer is because Brad told you, right? 100% so, hands down. There's no, no. Yeah, so if I see my friends on video talking about how great Greg the Zillow killer is, I'm going to probably use them more <laughs> likely than if Greg had a commercial. <laughs> well, I'm not the Zillow killer. I just rock the Zillow killer. James the Zillow killer. Um, uh, but, you know, I know what you're saying. And, you know, Tim, how <clears throat> I think people are afraid to ask for the testimonials, right? So how do you get people to – how do you get your past clients, friends, family, and there's other people to, to say nice things about you? I mean, what, how does that script work? Well, you know, that's a really good question. People ask me that all the time. Um, and here's the same answer I give, and I, I gosh, I, I hope this isn't too, too brazen, but you just got to ask. <laughs> I mean, I mean, the truth is, you got, you got, you just got to suck it up and ask. I mean, mm -hmm. because the thing is, is that uh, if I, if I called Greg, you know, and I said, or if I, or if I texted him or whatever, and I said, hey, Greg, would you mind giving me a testimonial about, da, 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 you know, my company or whatever, you know, if he says no. I'm still going to be on a show. 
I mean, it, it doesn't have to be emotional. I think what we've got to do is we've got to kind of re remove the emotion from it. And you know, if your if your if your family doesn't want to give you a, you know, if your family doesn't want to give you a, a testimonial, well, okay, just let it go. Don't let it ruin Christmas. Just let it go. It doesn't matter. And not everybody is comfortable with doing something like that. But when people are, then do it. You know, I and the other thing is I, I would definitely um, uh, ask. You know, if, if I were selling houses. I would definitely ask at the, you know, at the, as they're signing, they're, on that exciting day, get them when they're up, you know, on the day that they're signing or the day that they walk in with their keys, take that opportunity. Can they take five minutes and just stand outside the house and give a, give a testimony? I mean, they're probably going to do it just because they're, they're, they're on the high at the moment, you know, take advantage of where people are at. And they're probably going to say, yes, I, I very rarely have people say no, if I want a testimonial for something. But I'm just willing to ask, and it's just sometimes it's just a matter of asking. Okay, nice. All right, so we got so video testimonials are one. What's another trend that you're seeing here that you know from the data that you're crunching that agents need to be aware of? I think uh, there's a couple of things that people are looking at. Uh, this thing called social wellness. This is a very big deal right now, and this doesn't seem. When I first saw this number, these numbers, and that is. People are, are converting on things that they believe have to be social media wellness or social media wellness, yeah. And what that means is that people are beginning, it's the weirdest thing, you guys. It's kind of like the fact that the Tiger King got so big on, on <laughs> um, Netflix. <laughs> I mean, I was just talking to somebody about it today that that's got to be the most bizarre show in the world, but I can't stop watching it. I don't know. I don't know what the deal is, but you know, I think it's because we're all cooped up. I, I think we're all cooped up with no one, nothing else to do. I don't know. But anyway, um, it's it's weird. People are there are trending hashtags on Twitter. They're they're hugely trending, and it's all about getting off of social media, like hashtag uh, take a break from social media or hashtag. Uh, social media break. And so what we're seeing is that people are beginning to want to be a part of things that are outside of social media. So, but people are using social media to do those things. So it's kind of a bizarre thing that's happening. But a really good example is we've seen a number of, of um, companies and service providers starting to do meetups in their community through meetup, the, 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 um, really? the platform meetup. They're starting to do meetups for all sorts of different things. Like, you know, um, I, I, I tried desperately to find one in real estate, and I couldn't really find a very good example because some of them are so niche. Like, they're doing meetups, but they're doing meetups around a particular neighborhood, and they only care if they get 10 people. I'm talking about they're doing, like, meetups like um, they'll get a, sh like a, a company, a service company. Uh, like, there's a plumber in Orlando here who did a meetup where – the company got a chef, uh, and they served all this food, and they had this whole tasting thing. It was a plumber. I mean, it, it didn't seem to work, but it was this idea of let's get off social media and meet. And then they, he just had a tent there to pass out flyers about his plumbing company. And he said that, and, and I, I went, and I asked him about it, and he said his phone just it won't stop ringing because people are saying, we're just, we went to your event. We thought it was so great. And you know what? We do have this plug toilet in our basement and we've never been able to get fixed it's just the weirdest thing but the more that we begin the more that we're trying to offer people opportunities to network with each other and socialize outside of social media because here's the thing one trend that we're seeing over and over again is that people are talking about how tired they are of social media mm -hmm. because it's been so brutally used especially in politics it's been so brutal that people are tired of it and they just want to talk to people again and now that they're all cooped up, this was, you know, six months ago we started seeing this happen. Now that people have all been cooped up, my guess is that four months from now it's even going to be bigger than ever. That people are going to be looking for opportunities to get together outside of social media. And so that's taking a break from social media wellness, rather. Taking a break from social media. I think we can capitalize on that as real estate agents because you guys have access to some pretty cool stuff. I mean, even if you could – you know, some just some pretty cool ideas. You guys are pretty creative, and it wouldn't no, cost very much to do it. I mean, this guy, you know. You know, I'm, I'm thinking about, like, uh, how that would play out, and I see Gene kind of cocking his head over there, kind of looking up at the sun, uh, at, at the ceiling, kind of coming up with ideas. 
Uh, I mean, my mind's working overtime right now on how that could work. I mean, there's a lot of these restaurants that have been closed or have not been able to be, you know, get their, get people in there again. I mean, how great would it be to go and work with, there's a bur- place called Burger Barn or Burger Shack or Burger something, you know, here around the corner. And they just opened. Go to that place and, you know, go into, you know, have them, hey, man, you guys aren't selling shit. So do you want to, you know, get some more visibility? Talk to five, four or five other restaurants on that same strip. Everybody come out of their restaurant to a full on like food festival right downtown and invite it, invite all the neighbors, go door knock on all the other businesses, have it be a networking event for the entire city for all these businesses who are dying on the vine who can't sell shit right now. I mean, it, what a great idea. It's so simple. But yet, so overlooked because everyone's attracted and latched onto this social media nipple that we've been sucking on forever in a day. I love the idea of meeting up. I can't fucking wait to get out of this gosh damn house and go out and go door knocking again. As sick as that sounds, you know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, Gene, where yeah, I, I, a really good, a really good example. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Gene, go ahead. No, sorry, guys. We just got a delay here, so it's a little hard for us to. to, to we don't want to step on each other's toes. If you hear delays, there's uh, there's a delay here on the show. Gene, where would you go with the with the with the meetups and socializing outside of social media? Are we talking during this or after? Because we're in like a state after. of lockdown over here. Well, after, after. obviously. Which I, yeah, I, mean, I like yeah. your idea. I like your idea there. Um, I'm I'm like right now. Everybody keeps saying, "What are you missing the most about?" being in you know in in quarantine and it's me me it's going out to the restaurants i mean i think maybe just holding i i think the first couple of weeks coming out of this people are still going to be sketchy about being close to each other so you still got to be careful i think open air events is probably going to be a a bigger deal than going and sitting into a crowded restaurant right off the bat so mm-hmm. i'm thinking more i don't know maybe a bar a celebratory barbecue at a park somewhere where you just you buy frozen hamburgers for you know eight bucks and you bring people down and you just flip burgers and have music going like it could be something as simple as that let's say you go to costco spend like 500 bucks get a fuck ton of burgers and uh and relish on condiments and buns and some cheap you know uh, you know some some bags of chips and just put it out hey guys in this area i'm flipping burgers i got 500 burgers you know come on down it's 100 percent free come and come and grab some fresh air with me and you got yeah, but you like got to also have cases of Corona though, because you got to you got to have a pl- you do you got to have a play on the virus and how we're now out totally, of Corona. totally totally right right you got to spin it yeah <laughs> totally you do I just came up with an idea you like that don't you from, from, from one coronavirus to another come join me. Uh, I just saw somebody today post something on you know on Facebook when it's when it says uh, congrat uh, started a new job at this one yeah. said starting a new job at being quarantined as an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's some that's some really interesting stuff. Okay, Let, so good. Well, the other the, the other thing I wanted to t- talk to you about that kind of ties in with that is the Generation Y and Generation Z. So. So I would be considered Generation X, which is somewhere between somewhere between 40, 38, and 50. Okay, these are rough numbers. I mean, if you go out there and search these things out, you'll find 20 different people say 20 different things. But basically, so then my, so then you've got your millennials, which are basically Generation Y or the or the or the the millennials, and then you know who are about 24 to about you know somewhere between 20, 19, 18. And then you've got the 18, 17 year olds. That's Generation Z down to about right now. They're they trend about 13, 14, 15, something like that. Everything that Generation Y and Generation Z is buying right now cover two things. Number one, either an experience or a cause or both. That's what they're doing. So if so, here's a good example. So if you're providing an experience, which is let's get together, drink Corona get out in the sunshine, talk to each other, eat a burger. That's an experience. People are going to come for that. They, they And they're going to trend that. They're going to they're gonna click on that. They're going to, you know, when you advertise that. But think about this. A person that I, I just was at a meeting yesterday, a local, um, so a local service provider is working with a local school, because remember, schools are closed in a lot of places. 
And so that means that gener generating income, like, you know, like fundraiser income and that kind of stuff, it's all kind of stopped. So there's a local mm -hmm. local service provider who's working with a, who's working with a local school. They're going to go to Sonny's Restaurant, which is a chain here in the south. I don't know if you guys have Sonny's where you are, but mm -mm. there's a big chain, barbecue chain. And Sonny's is well known for doing um, fundraising for schools. They, they're well known. So mm -hmm. they so this this company has has partnered with Sonny's. And they said that basically, once this is over, their idea is they're going to host a fundraising opportunity for one of these local schools that's been closed. This is given that, you know, the state of Florida doesn't shut down for the rest of the year. I mean, you know, but at any rate, they're going to do it. And what they're going to do is they're going to they're going to match dollar for dollar everything that gets raised in a certain time period at Sunny's. So Sunny's gives like 10 percent, I think, of all. You know, so like if they go from five to nine and everything in there, they get 10 percent. Well, then these, these, this company is going to additionally add another 10%. And what they're hoping for is they're going to be there. This guy is kind of a lot like Greg. Uh, you know, he's, he's the people person. He likes being out with people. So he's going to go, and he's just going to be perusing the crowd. He's going to be answering questions. He's, he's going to have somebody there that talk about their service, the, the services they offer to the community. Uh, they're healthcare related, so they're going to be doing that. But the whole idea is that they're going to be – it's a cause and an, ex and an experience at the same time. There's an old, there's an adage out there in travel right now: don't sell the, don't sell the yurt, sell the jungle. And and that's the idea. Don't just sell the yurt, sell the jungle. It, you look, you get to be in a yurt, but you're in a jungle. And look at all the things that are happening in the jungle, right? Well, I would say that what we're saying is: don't sell the yurt, sell the jungle, but don't sell the yurt, sell the rainforest. Because see, the rainforest. That, that's a that's a cause, and so it, and so not only do I go to the rainforest, but I'm also saving the rainforest. Right? Don't sell don't sell the igloo. Sell the polar ice cap. Sell global warming. I love, I love See, this. That's this the is, thing. So, this is this is this is my so that's important. Going 100 miles an hour right now on this thing, and this is just so much, so much to do. I'm thinking of a pizza place uh, in downtown Danville. Uh, called Primos, and um, you know they have a they have a parking lot in front, right? They're like smack dab in the middle of downtown Danville, and they do already do a buy one get one free pizzas, right? And so go in there and spend five hundred dollars. You know, hey man, you know, give me cost on these things. Let's get a shit ton of people down here. We'll go, you know, we'll have Corona beer, Corona on tap, or Corona, you know, cans there because they have a liquor license. And you know, then bring a, a mobile pet adoption in, or maybe do something for the local, so the San Ramon High School, which is right around the corner, for some, some fundraising for them. Or, I mean, what do you think about something like that? That's what that's what you're talking about, right? Exactly, exactly. Pizza and pets, right? Oh, that's what we're Try to sell a pets. cause, yeah. right? Try to sell a cause. Because Generation X, Y, and Z are big about causes, and if they. If they so like you're wearing a shirt today, Zillow Killer, right? Mm -hmm. If if because so right now you're branding yourself with that, and if I don't know who your friend is, but I know who you are, if I see Zillow Killer somewhere, I'm going to think about you. So if so if they if people believe that if they begin to put together, you know, Greg is the guy that ran that that fundraiser for that pizza joint that I liked, and he said he was a realtor. I'm going to call him. Listen, that that is what I'm talking about. They, you're trying to connect in people's minds the fact that you are a community builder. You're not just a real estate agent. You build communities. And I think when you talk about that, when you start to think that way, then I think what's going to happen is you're going to find that you're, the type of person that comes across your, your desk, your phone, is going to be a little bit different because they're going to they're going to care about the things that you care about. Mm -hmm. And which is another reason why you have to be so careful about what you put on Facebook, because mm -hmm. the problem with these people, these types of people is that they're fickle. They, they can be gone as easily as they can be gotten. But the truth is, if you're careful about what you cut, if you're authentic about what you do on the Internet, because let me tell you something in this whole latest debacle of all the different political things that have been happening over the last four to six years. Mm -hmm. What people are looking for more than anything right now is authenticity. So if they think that you're authentic, that's like the Pied Piper. They're going to follow you. And, so if, and that's what we're seeing in the numbers. 
even with the political thing, let's say mm -hmm. and this is purely for uh, just a debate, right? Not, there, I'm not saying that anyone is affiliated in any direction. Let's say you're a Democrat. I'm a Republican. Gene's a Gene's middle of the road. You're a you're a social independent socialist. You're an independent socialist. socialist. Um, <laughs> Um, but so let's say, you know, so I, so again, Tim, for, for a second, the argument, you're a Democrat, I'm a Republican, Gene's a socialist. And, you know, would do you find that people, do you find that the lines are drawn so hard in the sand politically that, like, because you're a Democrat and I'm a Republican, it's like, fuck you, dude, I'm not going to hang out with you because you, you like Hillary Clinton and I like Donald Trump, you know? Or do you see that, or do you see it as a reverse of, like, dude, like Tim, for sure, he's he's not rude. He owns what he what he says, and he's just authentically true to himself. I can hang with a cat like that. I mean, how is that splitting out? Yeah, that these are really good questions, and we see a lot of those answers in social media data. And um, here's what we see: baby boomers. Um, you, if you are trying to attract baby boomers, you better have a flag and an eagle. You know, you better you better be. <laughs> You better be ready to go, right? Or you better be a hippie that with a brain. You know, you got to be on either side. You got to pick your side, and you better go for it. And you better be strong either way. And you can't, you know, because you're going to attract. You're only going to attract one or the other. I, I believe. Right now, now this could change because social media changes. But right now, so if you're if you're trying to attract baby boomers who are retiring and buying homes, you better figure out which side you're going to be on and. Uh, you know, you, you're just going to have to – they are very polarized right now. With your Generation X and your Generation generation X, which is your, your, your young adults that are in the workforce, so, you know, somewhere 25, maybe 18 to 25, maybe. I mean, these numbers are so hard. But, you know, if you got your you got your, your, your – oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Generation X is me. I'm, I messed up. So Generation X is like, you know, 25 to 50, maybe 20, you know, something like that. You know, we're just mad. I mean, we're just mad, and we're just trying to figure out how to live, and and so really, we don't want to hear too much about that. We just, you know, that's that's our parents' fight, and mm -hmm. and we've been kind of suffering from our parents' fights for a long time. So it's probably not as important to me. As in fact, uh, I don't, you know, if if you and I were politically completely different, it wouldn't matter to me if I bought a house from you. But here's the thing: in the next groups down, yeah, in the next groups but down, they're they're just absolutely. I mean, I cannot tell you. I have a 17 year old at my house, so. She's a senior in high school. I cannot tell you how fed up she is with the entire group of people who keep trying to tell her that we're all in this together when she knows fair, full well that they're living high on the hog and she can't, didn't get to keep her job or may not be able to graduate high school with her classmates. And she is saying to me over and over again, they don't, they're not in this with me. And so there's this, again, I go back to the same thing, because this is what we're seeing in the numbers, that authenticity is what converts. See, that, see but the problem is all these, all these baby boomers and Generation Xers, too, who are trying to be hip and validated on social media, Generation Z and Generation Y, so the millennials and then my daughter's age, which are high schoolish, you know, middle school, high school now, they are just not having any of it. If you're not if you're not authentic, that's the deal. So, if you if you are a company who, for every pair of socks that you buy, we send a pair of socks to Ghana. Mm -hmm. My daughter is buying ten pairs of socks. That's what she's doing. But she could care less whether or not you are a socialist or not. She just doesn't care. And so the thing because she's tired of hearing about it. She's tired of hearing about it. They don't really get it. They they just want to have a job and graduate high school. They thought this was going to be the greatest year ever. Turned out to be the greatest nightmare. So they are, they're engaging in a very different way than the baby boomers are who are all just posting one side or the other. You're either an idiot or you're an idiot. You're either a moron <laughs> or an idiot. That's it. And it's just constant, right? So because either side is saying the same thing, and they see that polarization, and they don't like it, and they disengage. In fact, the move, so a year ago, we started trending the numbers and the move of Generation Y, which are the millennials, Generation Millennial, and the, and my daughter's generation, which is now being called Generation Z, but it's going to change. But anyway, um, the move of Facebook from Facebook to um, Instagram was unbelievable. Like really? it, it was it was colossal. The numbers, yeah. 
because they all moved to Instagram because they that's where they found each other and they didn't find all of the rhetoric that was being pushed out on the internet. It pushed them away. And so that's the other thing I just want you, that's why I tell people all the time, and, and when your listeners call me um, and they ask me about these things, I always tell them the same thing. Be very careful what you put on social media because you're not just trying, I mean, I don't think, Greg, and you tell me, or Gene, you tell me if I'm wrong, but I don't think you're trying to only, you're not trying to only get one base of people because those people could be gone. You, you're trying to extend out, right? Well, if you're going to extend out, you got to understand your you got to understand your message. And right now, I'm telling people of all kinds of companies, make your message authentic and make it connected to a cause, and you're going to have sustainability past COVID nineteen. That's what I that's what I see in the numbers. You know, Tim, I think what we're, we we cannot cover. We got to wrap this thing up, uh, unfortunately, because this is some awesome content. I want to get you back on. I want to go deeper on this stuff because this is some. This is some information that I think is so important to really realize and really follow because you're right. There is a division going on in certain sex, uh, sectors of the uh, of the population, and, and it is is fascinating to to talk to someone like you as a PhD in this. Who you, you're studying the actual number, like the hard data. It's not like it's not just a, a, a thought that you had over a beer with a buddy and you guys just bullshitting there at a barbecue. Um, it, it's factual, and so you know we're going to get you back. We're going to get you back sooner as soon as we we can and we're going to continue to continue this conversation but okay i want people to be able to reach out to you so if they want to talk with you hire you <clears throat> you know sit down and chat with you you know how can they get what your content how can they get into maybe a course how can they how can they get in more of how can they get more tim well the best way to get a hold of me right now is uh since i very first start way back in the day when we were on what was that blurb blab, blab? blab. what was that thing blab. that we were on yeah, it was blab. Oh, way God. back in the day. Um, yeah, that's how I found uh, Greg, Gene. I just yeah. I, I was on one day, and I answered a question, and then all of a sudden they invited me to be in, and that was it. That was What was that, that's three awesome. years ago? <laughs> yeah, 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 it was, I mean, like it was crazy. I mean, I, I remember blabbing, dude. It was the greatest fucking thing ever because you could sit there and listen to people. <laughs> it and was. Them. It was great. They sit there and chat, and then they shut it down like out of the blue, and they had like 30 million users or something like that, and then just like click done. I'm I like, know. Wait, what? No. I, I, I think there was I, I think there was like mismanagement or something. But anyway, um, since the very beginning, I've offered the same thing, and I've just continued to offer it to real estate un uncensored just because – I know that it's valuable to people. If they go to bookdrtim.com, uh, I'm sorry, org, org, sorry, so, 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 so. bookdrtim.org. If they go to bookdrtim.org, you'll see uh, it's the university, it's St. Thomas University. That's where, I, that's where I teach out. That's where I do all my research. But listen, um, just book a time on there, and I'll give you 20 minutes for free. And then we can talk about if you, know, you want to do more, then, then great. But you know, all I ask is you just, uh, book, just go to bookdrtim.org. And I'd be glad to talk to you for 20 minutes for free. Just book a time. And um, you know what? Uh, if I can help you, then great. And uh, if, if I can do something more than that, then fine. You know, we, we spend a lot of time booking, uh, you know, crunching numbers on all kinds of engagements. Uh, we not only do um, social media, but we also do things like uh, instructional design for online learning engagement and all sorts of things. We're just we're total nerds. And so, but, uh, but, you know, so we can help you in a lot of different areas. And so if I can be of any help to you or answer any questions regarding this or some other data, or if there's data that you want me to crunch for you, I can do that as well. So just book drtim.org and I'd be glad to help you any way I can. Damn. That's an offer right there, guys. Holy sheep shit. Well, Dr. Tim, I know I'm going to be booking 20 minutes with you because I love your, where your brain is. I know you keep calling yourself a nerd, but uh, we need humans like you who understand this stuff and not just going off the cuff and just talking out of their rear ends on the back of a you know, not napkin. You know, you really know what you're talking about. So, Gene, how, how can people reach uh, the evil bald ninja, the Vulpinator? You know, I'm going to change gears a little bit today, okay? Holy you okay with that? shit. No, no, no. no. I, I, uh -oh. you, know, you can always get me at genevolpe.com. You can always hit that website. There's actually a little widget on it where you can reach out. And actually, you can still do that anyway if you want to. Um, I'm not doing for business right now. So what, I, what I'm talking about here is uh, go, go on to Facebook and search for the hashtag challenge to lead. I'm in day 11 today of that. And what it is is a friend of mine is doing these daily videos. And I'm, I'm on there for two to anywhere from two to seven minutes. 
And I'm just talking about a thought of the day. Like yesterday was cybersecurity, how to protect yourself because there's all this stuff going on with uh, scams, people trying to get you for, you know, they think they're getting a stimulus check and send us your information. We'll fast track the stimulus check to you. There's all kinds of stuff <laughs> going on right now. And we, we laugh, right? Like I laugh too because you're like, there's no way people will fall for this, but people do. They do. And it's crazy. But right now I'm kind of mentally, I'm, I'm as strong as I've ever been, I think. And, and, I, and in, in these times, um, I th I'm seeing people around me, close and otherwise, struggling with being quarantined and struggling with, with the unknowing of what's happening and all just crazy stuff. You, what's happening in your job and, and what's happening in your life and what's going to happen to your wife and how about your finances and what am I going to be able to do about the house and whatever it ends up being, it's totally natural. I'm, I'm okay with all that stuff. I, I'm just offering... Watch some of those videos, and if you need to reach out to talk to somebody, and I, like I said in one of my videos the other day, if you want me to console you, if you want me to yell at you, or if you just want me to be a straight-up asshole, I can do every, all of those things. <laughs> um, but I'm offering my services out right now to say to you, if you need somebody to chat, don't keep it in. Just hit your boy up. In the meantime, go watch those videos. If you, if you saw Sunday night, you got a glimpse of, of uh, a little bit of a tequila party with my wife. Which was kind of funny. So we did some cooking. We did like a forty-minute cooking video, and people. I did went nuts. see that. I did see that. It, it was, that was pretty funny. She's, my, she she hates the camera. She wherever I have the camera around, it's like get that out of my face. Except for that night, she was feeling pretty good, and she was like, "Go ahead, let's cook." <laughs> <laughs> so it's Dude, a fun watch. What was that hashtag? <laughs> challenge to lead. Hashtag challenge to lead. All together, one word. I know you know that, Doctor Tim, but some people might not. All right. right. I, like oh, I got it. Uh, Gene, that's a big trigger. Lead. Yeah, challenge to lead. Okay. I will. Gene, do you mind if I jump on the challenge to lead bandwagon as well, and I'll start doing a couple Craig, of videos? I, listen, I should, I'm sorry that I didn't ask you to do it. You should absolutely be on that. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Do it. And Tim, you should be doing it too, with all your knowledge. Get people in in, in your social sphere, man. I think that would be amazing. All of you guys should be doing this too. I yeah. can't wait to, to to challenge to lead. I love this thing. Okay, guys, follow Tim. Remember, it's book, doc, is it DR or is doctor spelled out? No, no, DR. Okay, bookdrtim.org, bookdrtim.org. Actually, I'm going to put this in here right now. Get 20 minutes of his time, guys. Trust me, guys, I've had him on the show multiple times. I think it's his third or fourth time uh, on the show. Um, yeah, I, I think, think it's four. four. Yeah. I think it's four. I think, it's, I think it is four. Uh, but it's super Super smart, obviously super giving gentleman here. Uh, go get some time with him. Go do the hashtag challenge to lead with Gene. Um, you know what, guys? I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to mimic Gene because I love where, he, where your mind and your heart is at. This is not about business right now. This is about anything I can do to assist any single one of you that is out there. I want you guys to DM me on Facebook. You know, Hit me up. I will hit you back. Um, and let's have a conversation and let's just, if I can help you, if I can give you some creative ideas to maybe work through some of this stuff or any connections to people that I know, anything I can do to help you, I am here. So you guys are absolutely amazing human beings. Tim, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for coming back on the show. Uh, Gene, you are always you a wealth of knowledge. And guys, you, share this out for everyone who might need to hear this. I also put in the comments here, guys, if you're watching us on Facebook, uh, all 10 of these um, trends. So we didn't get through them all, but they all are in the notes uh, so that you guys can go read them there. All right, guys, we absolutely love you. Gene, you need to do your job. Gosh, damn it. You need to pick a color. Uh, can I do two today? Sure. All right, so let's do the Corona blue and yellow. And, when, and I don't mean the virus. I mean the beer. Let's do the Corona blue and yellow. Okay, we got a Corona blue and a Corona yellow bow tie that we're going to be rocking today, guys. Thank you for watching. Thank you for hanging. Thank you for just supporting our show. If you guys like this, share this. Um, if you guys would like to get involved with any of our guests, please give us a five-star review on iTunes. It helps the show get more and more ratings, which gets rated higher and higher. And as always, guys, we'll see you on the flip side. But until then, peace out, ninjas.